My name's Peter Stunt and I'm head technician at uh, SNG Barrett Group. We're going to fit fuel injection to this car. First thing we've got to do is to take off the bits that we don't need. I've isolated the battery and I've drained the coolant. Well, I've removed the, uh, all of the hoses to uh, get the, the manifold free and I've got to undo the 18 nuts to get the manifold off the car. It's just great, you know, the, you look at that kit. Not only does it work, it kind of looks really good as well. Uh, I think if you're building the perfect E-Type, you've got to go for it, isn't you? You don't need to take it to a garage if, you, if you're a competent home mechanic. Um, you can do it yourself and, and the, you know, the, the feeling you get from making that conversion all by yourself is, is going to be something special. Right, so that's a big bit out of the way. The carburetor and in inlet manifold is gone. Uh, the next thing is uh, distributor. Ah. That's easy. So starting at the at the rear, we're going to remove the original pickup plate from the fuel tank, uh, which I've already loosened the, the bolts and I can actually take that out now and we don't need that anymore, so that's that's going. And I'm going to replace that with the new high pressure pump. Uh, which has its own uh, recirculation feature. There's a pressure regulator built in, so that means that um, we only need one line to feed the fuel injection, so we can use the original fuel line. This is the main cable to feed the pump in the boot. That end, that's the, the fore end, so that will connect to the relay and fuse block. Uh, and then we have a nice little weatherproof connector at the pump end, so that will be in the boot. I've made a small hole in the boot to take the cable which feeds power to the pump. So I'm just going to pass that through now. This is going to go under the car, over the rear axle, and then it'll follow the fuel line through to the front of the car. So I'm just going to make the connection to the pump. That's it, that's that connected, and then I'll feed that through using the original clips and then the grommet on there and it's done. When you drain the coolant out of these, no matter how careful you are, at least a gallon goes up your sleeve and into your armpit and then the rest goes on the floor. So this little cog will be mounted on the crankshaft damper uh, and this, together with this clever little device, tells the ECU uh, the position of the crank. Uh, it counts the number of teeth and works out when it needs to fire from that. Uh, there's one tooth missing, that is intentional, that is a TDC, so it knows that the count will start again. Very easy to set up, uh, you bolt it on. There's a little, tiny little mark there which you align a TDC and that's it set. You just set the air gap, job done. Here it is installed, it comes with a bracket uh, which bolts straight on. You just need to make sure the air gap is correct. Uh, once that's done and it's timed up correctly, that's it. So while we're rolling around under the car, I'll just point out another couple of sensors that we need. Just here, screwed into the oil gallery is uh, another sensor that detects oil pressure and that stops the uh, the engine starting until you have good oil pressure it also means that if you lose oil pressure when you when you're running it'll kill the ignition and you, your car will stop um, hopefully preventing damage we have uh, oxygen sensors uh, a pair of oxygen sensors so there's one in each manifold and these are just sensing uh, the exhaust gas flow uh, and adjusting the ratio to suit. So the next stage is installing the wiring harness. Um, looks quite complicated but everything's labelled. All of the ends have a little yellow sticker on which tell me exactly where they're going to go which is fantastic. Um, I'm just going to lay it now into the engine bay, make the connections inside the car 
um, and then we're, uh, we're good to move on. So just making sure that the, the root keeps away from anything moving or hot. Uh, so it's all going around the back of the engine, out of the way. That's all of the connectors basically in position. I have two connections here for the oxygen sensors that go into the two manifolds. Um, to get those to fit, we supply a little boss there, which uh, needs to be welded into the existing manifold or into the, the exhaust. Um, that's, unless you have access to a welder, that's probably something that you might need to uh, look at uh, a garage to, to sort out for you. But it's a simple job, uh, just a straight weld and then the oxygen sensor screws in. These two wires are the main power feed uh, to the whole, uh, the whole set. Uh, I'm going to connect that through to the terminal here, which is the main battery terminal. Obviously the battery's disconnected. Um, we've still got the, the disconnector thing there where I can see it. So I shan't uh, make that connection until everything else is finished. So the next thing that we're going to do uh, is fit the, the brain box. This is the ECU that controls everything. Uh, it comes with a bracket, which I'm going to mount inside the passenger footwell. And then those two parts will mate together. So this one first. So I've, um, I've fitted the support bracket, so the next thing I'm going to do is to fit the ECU itself. Um, the pins are quite delicate so you need to be fairly careful about pushing the connectors in, but uh, they lock in and once they're in that's it, it's, it's sorted. I need to make sure I get the connectors in the right order. They are marked one, two and three, that's it. There's one last connection I need to make inside the car before we go back under the bonnet. This is the 12 volt supply from the ignition and that uh, that tells the ecu that the ignition switched on i've now got to destroy the inside of the car to do that it's a bit of a palaver to get to the fuel box fuse box on on these but uh, oh, there we go right so we're we're heading in there with the one last wire that's it that's the connection made The harness is half in uh, and I'm going to start making a few connections now. We've got the, uh, we've got the oil pressure sensor down there, which is this one, which I'll just click in position. Oh, there we go. That was a struggle. Crank sensor that we talked about earlier. I can make that connection, which is that one. And then the rest, oh free and easy and dangling around here so most of these now are injectors but um, the next step is to fit the coil pack uh, before I make the next connection just as a matter of interest Jaguar being Jaguar uh, number there spark plugs from the back of the engine uh, not from the front, like everybody else in the world. So, number one is at the bulkhead. Uh, number six is at the radiator end. Something to bear in mind, as it uh, can cause confusion. This is the inlet manifold and the um, throttle bodies and injectors. This is just, a, it's basically just grease. It's just to help lubricate the seals as they go on. This is uh, almost the final stage, so we're dropping on the manifold and throttle body assembly, which is the last big bit to go on. There we go. We're uh, getting towards the end now, so all that's left now is connect the, the harness to the injectors, a um, couple of other sensors to connect. Uh, connect up the throttle linkage, put the coolant hoses back on, fill it with juice, um, fuel line, that's it. 
we're good to go. The connectors make a nice click when they're in position. Um, this is a cable throttle linkage. It's a race proven design. Gets rid of the, uh, the, the, the rod linkage system on the original car, but it connects to the original pedal. So the, uh, the pedal looks the same inside the car. Well, this is, uh, this is the last sensor. This is ambient air temp uh, pressure. We've got a temperature sensor down here and this just detects pressure so um, it'll alter the, the mixture according to how high you are above sea level and what the weather's doing. So it's all back together, uh, manifolds on and connected, throttle linkage is connected. Um, I've put the fuel line back on together with the fuel filter. Um, the coolant pipes have gone on, there's coolant in, so, fingers crossed, when I reconnect the battery and press the button, it'll go. Okay, well this is it then, let's see, uh, let's see what happens. Fuel pump runs, that's good. So there we are, it goes. We fitted it in, in under a day. Um, and it runs straight out of the box. Everything that we needed was in the box, so we're good to go. Uh, thanks for watching.